Hey Grade 2, Mrs Davis here. Today we're reading the book called Lucy Goosey. Um, it's a narrative about a little goose who likes to play in different places, but something happens. We'll read and find out what happens along the way, hey? So, Lucy Goosey. Written by Margaret Wilde and illustrated by Anne James. There she is, Lucy Goosey. Ever since she was a fluffy gosling with flippy flappy feet, Lucy Goosey had lived in this pond. She had jumped off that branch, sticking out of the water. She had sat on that rock as big as a cow. And she had played hide and seek in those bushes, dark as caves. I wonder what she's feeling, or how she's feeling. Does she look happy to you? Now Lucy Goosey was nearly full grown. She had proper feathers, and she had even learned to whiffle her wings as she landed in the pond. What good whiffling, Lucy Goosey, said her mother. You will find it very useful on our long flight. I don't want to go, said Lucy Goosey. The time had come for all the geese. Lucy Goosey, her mother, her cousins, her aunties and uncles, to fly away to another country. They were leaving that very night as soon as the sun went down. Lucy, Lucy Goosey stared up in the sky. It was vast, never ending. I wonder how she's feeling in, on that um, page. I'm not going, she said, and off she ran on her flippy flappy feet. Come back, Lucy Goosey, called her mother, or you'll get left behind. Don't care honked Lucy Goosey. Don't care, don't care, don't care. Lucy Goosey crept into the bushes, dark as caves. She hid among twigs and leaves. She tucked her head under her wing so she couldn't hear or see a thing. She must have fallen asleep because when she squeezed out of the bushes, it was night time again and very quiet. Lucy Goosey hurried down to the pond. It was empty. All the geese, even her mother, had gone. Do you know how she's feeling? Lucy Goosey swam around in lonely little circles. Then she huddled on the, in the reeds, listening to leaves, rustling twigs cracking. Oops. Things slithering. Mum, she whispered. Suddenly there was the sound of wings whiffling and a long sad honking. Lucy, Lucy Goosey, my dear, where are you? Mum, said Lucy Goosey, and she sped out of the reeds faster than a flying fish. Oh, I think they're feeling happier now. Her mother held Lucy Goosey close. She said, What's the matter, Lucy Goosey? Why don't you want to leave? Lucy Goosey stared up at the sky. It was dark and mysterious and never ending. What if I lose my way in the misty, moisty clouds, she asked. If that happens, said her mother, I will search the misty, moisty clouds until I find you. What if I get tired 
and fall into the cold, dark sea? asked Lucy Goosey. If that happens, I will search the cold, dark sea until I find you. Will you always search for me? asked Lucy Goosey. Always, said her mother, even when you're old, even when I'm old. When you're very old, said Lucy Goosey, you might lose your way and be scared. I might, said her mother. If that happens, said Lucy Goosey, I will look everywhere, in the sky, on the land, in the sea, until I find you. That would be very brave of you, Lucy Goosey, said her mother. Are you ready to go now? Ready, said Lucy Goosey. Oh, I think she's growing up and being brave. And away they flew into a never-ending sky full of stars. What a great story. It made me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Did you notice, girls and boys, that Lucy Goosey has favourite places to play? What, what are your favourite places to play? And I wonder if you could use describing words to describe them for me when you do some of your learning pack. Um, the reason we read this story is because you are going to be writing a little narrative, an imaginative story about Lucy Goosey. And we would like for you to use some of the words that the author used in here. It's words like misty, moisty cloud or flippy, flappy feet or um, describing the places that she liked to play in, like the, um, the bushes that were as dark as caves. If you use those kinds of words, you'll be doing a really great imaginative story for us. I can't wait to read it. Thank you for listening, Grey 2. Bye for now.